You're listening to Linux News Log. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for uh, supporting the show. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool news for this episode. Starting off at ZDNet, Valve details specs for its Linux-based Steam machine. This is pretty neat. Valve continues to meet out to slowly information about its forthcoming Linux-powered Steam machine living room gaming consoles. Uh, last week, it provided details on how you could qualify to obtain one of these. Um, a few more nuggets have been parceled out since then. The specs are going to be similar to what you'd find in a Windows-based uh, gaming PC. The only difference is being it, it'll be running Linux. Uh, it'll have a variety of Intel Core processors with the quad-core i7-4770 mentioned specifically. Um, it does not look like there's any AMD in sight here. Uh, you'll also get uh, 16 gigs of DDR3 1600 RAM and storage ranging from 1 to 8 terabytes uh, via hybrid disk drive, so should be pretty neat. Uh, the lower-end Steam machines are going to have the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 graphics cards, and as you go up, you'll get the GTX 760 and 780 cards, while the upper systems will come with the GeForce GTX Titan monster cards. This is some serious, serious hardware. Uh, so basically, you know, Valve is making it a point that a lot of these parts are built off the shelf. You know, a lot of these uh, steam machine hardware, they're, they're built with parts off the shelf. So you could conceivably um, replicate a lot of what they've done by building your own. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, by building your own <coughs> version of the, <coughs> by building your own version of a Steam machine, just basically replicating the the hardware that they have, because they're not doing anything special with the hardware itself. Um, anyway, from Wired.com, the French National Police ha has switched thirty seven thousand desktop PCs to Linux. That's right, the France's National Gendarmerie. A national law enforcement agency is now running 37,000 desktop PCs with a custom version of the Linux operating system. And by summer of next year, the agency plans to move all 72,000 of its desktop machines to the open source operating system. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, you know, it's possible that they just got tired of, uh, you know, paying for Windows and, you know, they were probably running Windows XP or, or, you know, something along those lines. And they just did not want to have to pay uh, to upgrade to the newest version of Windows. And since Windows XP is, you know, being phased out of support, or I think by this point, it's already no longer supported by Microsoft. Um, they had to make some switch and they figured, well, if we have to switch, let's switch to something that we can support in-house and isn't going to cost us licensing fees. So pretty interesting. From Ars Technica, the most powerful, and I'm using air quotes here, Arduino ever has an ARM Cortex A8 chip and runs full Linux. That is right. Uh, the Arduino line of open source electronic prototyping platforms is getting some major upgrades. Uh, the first Intel powered Arduino was announced, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, uh, and it'll be available by the end of November. But Arduino has also also announced the Arduino Tray. It's based on the Texas Instruments Satara AM335X ARM Cortex A8 processor. And uh, the Texas Instruments says that the Tray's one gigahertz processor is the most powerful Arduino to date and the first that will be able to run full Linux, which is pretty neat. It, it will be available in the spring of 2014 from Arduino.cc and other distributors with pricing not yet announced. So I am uh, 
They've got a picture of a prototype of it here, and it looks like it's going to give a Raspberry Pi a, a run for its money. Pretty interesting. I was wondering when Arduino, uh, <clears throat> when they were going to get around to uh, doing something like the tray where they could actually, you know, yet they have USB, they have HDMI out. It looks like they've got sound in and out, the whole bunch of stuff. So I'm curious to see uh, what, you know, what they're looking to do with this. It should be pretty interesting to say the least. Uh, from lilliputing.com, a Utilite ARM-based Linux PC is now available for $99 and up. CompuLab's Utilite is a tiny computer with a Freescale i.mx6 processor and support for Android and Ubuntu Linux. While Freescale's ARM Cortex-A8 processor isn't exactly a speed demon, it's uh, relatively Linux-friendly and comes in a single, dual, and quad-core versions. CompuLab offers Utilite models with each processor type with prices for the single core version starting at $99. So pretty interesting. Uh, it was unveiled earlier this summer. I think we covered it if I remember correctly, uh, but it is now available for order. From uh, bittech.net, Intel has announced the Quark-based Galileo dev board. This is pretty interesting. It retains full Arduino compatibility with uh, Arduino Shields. Um, it's uh, part of Intel's growing focus on the ultra-low power embedded market where there is a minnow compared to the likes of ARM, Texas Instruments, and Atmel. The Quark is a system on a chip design which Intel claims can act as both a microcontroller and microprocessor in embedded systems. While drawing a tiny amount of power, the chip offers full x86 compatibility, roughly equivalent to an original Pentium in terms of instruction set, and is capable of running a fully-fledged operating system like Linux. Uh, so, should be pretty interesting. The first commercial use of Quark is to be Galileo, a development board designed for the maker community. It's pin compatible with Arduino Shields, designed for the Uno Revision 3, running at either 3.3 or 5 volts. You get 14 digital uh, I.O. pins, six of which feature PWM uh, control, six analog inputs through an external AD7298 analog-to-digital converter chip, um, I squared C and two-wire interface support, uh, SPI interface running it up to 25 megahertz, an RS-232 UART, and um, there's a fair amount where it differs from the UNO. Um, it's powered by a 32-bit single-core uh, Quark chip running at 400 megahertz. You get 512K of on-die uh, SRAM. And the board also has some very tempting extras. 10 100 Ethernet connector, PCI Express 2 mini card slot, a USB 2 host connector. You get a 10-pin JPEG, JTAG header for debugging. 256 megs of RAM and an 8 megabyte legacy spy flash area for program storage, which can be expanded using a USB mass storage device or micro SD slot. Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> that is awesome. So anyway, uh, the only thing I wish it had was a SATA port. You know, you can expand it via USB, but still it'd be pretty cool if it came with SATA. So definitely check that out. Uh, it'll be available, uh, you know, near the end of November and uh, should be pretty cool. From Muktware, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5.10 arrives with improved stability. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 is scheduled to arrive in the second half of 2013, but there are still many users who are running Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5, which will be supported until quarter one, 2020. Red Hat has just pushed a minor update to the 5.x series. Uh, so version 5.10 gives you a little bit uh, better reliability and security. You get an updated version of OpenSCAP, the open source security content automation protocol, uh, and a few other things. So should be pretty cool. Definitely check it out if you are still running RHEL 5.10. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.